सबका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आज हमारे शो करियर टॉक्स पे जब जहां हम लोग बहुत सारी बातें करियर से रिलेटेड करेंगे सो वेलकम एवरीवन एंड दीज डेज देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ टॉक लॉट ऑफ बाज अबाउट स्टार्टअप्स यूनिकॉर्स एंड बिलेनियर्स क्लब्स सेवरल सच सेल्फ मोटिवेटेड इंडिविजुअल्स इन इंडिया आर चार्टिंग आउट सक्सेसफुल ऑन्टरप्रनरशिप स्टोरीज and are challenging the status quo in business these are india's entrepreneurs the dreamers who are charged up with the desire to innovate lead and disrupt traditional products and services so with all this buzz around us around these startup success stories and unicorns it is very natural for anyone to ponder on this question whether entrepreneurship is a great career option for me or not i'm sure there are hundreds of people out there hundreds of young students who would like this question to be answered by our two very great experts with me uh please welcome dr prachi gore and dr vikrant jain so these two uh prachi gore ma'am uh, dr prachi gore ma'am is from jodhpur and she is the country director of the international internship unit uh, university she is also the founder and ceo of remarkable education private limited you cannot swim for new horizons until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore and that she has proved again and again in her life and she is driven and her purpose is to educate the children and to show them the guidance and the right path in their career choice welcome dr prachi along with dr prachi today i have another renowned uh, professor and a trainer dr vikrant jain he specializes in hrm training and development and placement he prepares students for entrance exams and he conducts workshops on sops gdp gd and uh, personal interviews dr jain has more than a decade of experience consisting of corporate and academia he has worked with infosys and vodafone just to name a few and several top mba colleges and universities in ahmedabad and gandhinagar welcome dr vikrant jain so Thank back you. to our a million dollar question whether entrepreneurship is for me or not so this kind of dilemma that every student faces what is the right stream for me how can i choose a future that truly belongs to me so dr vikrant jain i would like to know from you what is this stream about what is entrepreneurship so first of all starting with it a lot of people have this question that is it right for me or not to go for entrepreneurship it is for everyone you don't need a special kind of you know a kind of specialization into it it's all about your heart it's all about how you follow your dream and passion and for me entrepreneurship is something that you have been always always thriving for so you know at at certain point of time most of us think that you know if i could have done this i would have been more successful so that that z factor or x factor that we usually talk about is nothing but that entrepreneurship thing that you are thinking deep so entrepreneurship is deep inside your heart which is not only uh, a point of earning money but it is a point of exploring yourself doing something passionately doing something that you can go and you know do year on year but you'll never get bored of it so entrepreneurship has a lot to do with the inherent hidden characteristics of yours as an entrepreneur which is yet to be explored so entrepreneurship has a lot to do with the creativity with the things that you think differently can be executed and so on and so forth so absolutely uh, you know unlike other professions it is not someone's cup of tea and i'm not my cup of tea it is everyone's cup of tea the only thing it requires is 100% dedication so yes that's my understanding and definition of entrepreneurship it starts the moment you realize you want to be an entrepreneur so uh, that's such a wonderful explanation and radically different from what we find as definition of entrepreneurship in books what dr vikrant has just said 
is that you should have the dedication and the passion to go on this path. Anyone and everyone can be an entrepreneur, whatever his stream of studies or whatever his age. So uh, that's a wonderful answer, Vikransa. I would now like to know, say, because you uh, said passion and dedication. So my question to you and Prachi ma'am is, what do you think? Like, if I wanted to take up science, I should be good in uh, physics or maths. And if I wanted to be a doctor, I, would, I should be good in biology. But what about the subjects or personality traits or characteristics that you would, would like to see in a potential successful entrepreneur? Vikrant, sir, you are on mute. There, there are a lot of traits that we usually look into for being a successful entrepreneur. I think the first is the risk-taking capacity. And when I say risk, it's not the blind risk that I'm talking about. It has to be a calculated risk. So I'll just narrate a story over here because I think the best way to understand entrepreneurship is with examples. So I was listening to this interview by Piyush Bansal, who happens to be the uh, CEO and the co-founder of Lenscart. And India is such a huge market where optics has been playing a huge role. Uh, but, but buying optics online is something very difficult to sell. And he came out with an idea that why can't, why can't we have a present that is both online and offline? It was difficult to convince the investor that we want to go offline because, you know, optic market said that I'll prefer to buy my optics with the next door optician who is available. So he gave this example that, you know, uh, let's say I, I see an advertisement of FMCG good and I'm impressed by that advertisement. I go, I, I come out of my house and I can see a Kirana store just next to my house and I can that, buy that goods. But unfortunately, in case of optics, if you're showing something online, the person doesn't have anything to test immediately, you know, with the next door shop. So that's the reason it was important for Lenska to have that offline presence also. So yes, it has to do a lot with the marketing. So as an entrepreneur, you don't need to be master of anything. First of all, the first trait that you should realize that you are not expected to be master of anything. The only trait that is expected for you is to understand the need, the necessity of a certain value factor at that point of time and take calculative risk, a, a kind of risk that you feel that, yes, it is something deserving risk. It should be tried out and you should go for it. So, so that's what I've learned from the Piyush Bansal's experience. And why only Piyush Bansal's experience that we usually talk about? You know, we talk about the Police Visa founders' experience. Or let's say we talk about the Sachin Bansal, Vinny Bansal story. They all have gone through such turbulent ride where, where at a certain point of time, they are very not decisive what to do. So they, they need to be decisive and you need to take certain... So it's, 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 a, it's a kind of dilemma that an entrepreneur will always have. If you want to listen to consumer... It, it is highly possible that investors won't be agreeing. And if you want to convince the investors, then vice versa would be happening. But what, what is important, you listen to your consumer, consumer will give you business, and business will be seen in the profits, and, and the investors will be convinced at the end of the day. So that's the philosophy that I've learned from Mr. Piyush Bans and a lot of other entrepreneurs, and that's what I can see as one of the characteristics when we talk about entrepreneurs. So take the risk, irrespective of the fact uh, how big or you know scale that you're looking for, take the immediate risk that you want to. So play it ball by ball, play it just day by day, uh, the entrepreneurship thing, and, and definitely you'll, you'll mark up a huge scale in the coming time. So uh, wonderful answer, uh, Dr. Vikran Jain. And for all of you, welcome again to this show. Thank you for joining in. And let me add here that we are on a career talk show and we are talking whether entrepreneurship is for me or not. So I would now invite Prachi ma'am, if she could add something on this, what are the potential characteristics that you would like to see in a successful entrepreneur? First of all, thank you so much for the wonderful uh, introduction, Meeta. And yes, being a career coach, there are, I believe to be an entrepreneur and being an entrepreneur, first of all, there are seven uh, skills which are actually required to be an entrepreneur. Although anyone can be in this particular field, but there are seven major traits which are actually very much required. So the one is a vision, which is really very important and a team which uh, who actually follows that vision and know exactly that what you want to do. And second, which uh, I say about the passion uh, and energy towards that vision, because we all have ideas, we all have concepts and different things. But to follow that with that great passion, because every day uh, entrepreneurship is almost like you're absolutely on the another planet and absolutely alone. So you start from scratch and then you will do everything. Because nowadays in India, there's too much of, you know, uh, startup India feeling is there and every... Uh, 
यू यंग मेंबर एवरी यूथ मेंबर यू नो हर एक बच्चे को दे ऑल वांट टू बी इनटू दिस स्टार्टअप फील्ड सो दैट पैशन एंड एनर्जी विद द सेम जिस्ट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर एवरीवन एंड थर्ड वन व्हिच आई वुड लाइक टू स्टेट इज question yourself so that uh, asking questions to their uh, themselves then their plans strategy business ideas i mean curious i would rather say that curiosity is very important when we talk about entrepreneurship to know about uh, your competitors to know about your uh, other team members to know about uh, your entire business to before you start with it so that is also the third point which is very important and a work ethics which is again very important and certainly it's very difficult to teach something which comes from within over the period of experience only so that's something which uh, we learn in that way itself but work ethics is equally important and that's how you grow you uh, you know cross the ladder from one to another so the ethics are uh, also very important and opportunities are everywhere is just uh, we need to understand which one is for ourselves just to not jump from another one to another so you need to sometimes in op- entrepreneurship is like you do have opportunities but in entrepreneurship we are the one who are supposed to create the opportunities for ourselves in business so that is again we should know that when and how we can create and what is re- need uh, of an art so that one thing and um, sixth point which i would like to state communication as meeta is there so communication is the key for entrepreneurship if you can communicate like uh, dr vedant was telling uh, about a story so storytelling right that's again equally very important so that communication plays a very very important role and uh, seventh which is sales so if you can communicate talk about it sell your idea then obviously you'll be able to do the sales so that passion with the cycle skills is required because entrepreneurship is not only an idea it ha- it has all the skills is a combination of everything together so that you can do so uh, this is from my end amita over to you so very well uh, put to dr prachi and i do agree that uh, with dedication passion and creativity a certain amount of curiosity and i do believe that you know you should be at the right time at the right place to grab that opportunity to be able to understand what the customer wants at that particular time is the most important factor here so uh, coming back to my question uh, is that डॉक्टर जनिक बनने के लिए बायोलॉजी की जरूरत थी तो क्या आप समझते हैं कि इकोनॉमिक्स या फिर कुछ कॉमर्स या कुछ अकाउंटिंग कुछ ऐसी सब्जेक्ट्स मुझे पढ़ना चाहिए एक अच्छा अंतपुर बनने के लिए क्योंकि ये एक ओल्डेस्ट प्रोफेशन है सर तो इसके पीछे देर इज नो स्ट्रीम ऑफ एजुकेशन बिहाइंड इट सो देर आर सो मेनी सक्सेसफुल पीपल हु हैव पढ़ाप नेवर डन एन एम बी ए और नेवर इवन गॉन टू अ कॉलेज so uh, i would now request both of the experts to tell me if there is a certain kind of an education degree that i should take uh, i think i'll like to start with it i i belong to a state of gujarat and uh, it is what is one of the because we have international students also just to let them know uh, in india we have a state of gujarat where you will find a lot of entrepreneurs now it has a direct correlation with the financial literacy and financial literacy plays a huge role in becoming a successful entrepreneur because being an entrepreneur you are not only handling your own money but you are handling investors money as well so what's important over here let's understand step by step as a startup venture let's say as a something that you want to do big in your life you will always running short of money in the at least initial years of your life because you'll be planning a lot of things you'll be planning you know uh, you know big buy ups or let's say mergers and you'll be thinking about good things and you know you'll be planning to have a setup of office and everything but if the financial literacy point is missing trust me you won't be able to handle that money well and one of the reasons that maximum startups fail so you must be aware about the failure ratio obviously it is lesser than the success ratio in fact more than 90% startups fail so one of the reason that they fail is because of the poor financial literacy amongst the young entrepreneurs so we usually see young entrepreneurs you know once they get the money from the investing they'll prefer to buy a office and all the accommodated commodities and everything but they've not earned money out of it so think in a different way that if i have received the money i need to make it double so financial literacy about things so so i was going through this percentages the financial literacy that is available in india 
So highest financial literacy is there in Gujarat, which is 34%. The second highest financial literacy is there in Delhi, that is 32%. The rest other states are having much lesser financial literacy. And all these startups that we have seen most of the time, if I talk about, you know, if we take the history of last 40, 50 years, you'll find very few entrepreneurs being an MBA. So, so if I talk about Jeff Bezos, if I talk about, uh, let's say, uh, 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 for that instance, Steve Jobs, they had a certain, certain quality which they were good at. But at the end of the day, irrespective of the fact, whatever domain you belong to, a commerce background or a science background or any background for that instance, the most important factor that will be there is the financial literacy. How do you manage money? And trust me, financial literacy is one of the subjects that's not taught in any of these schools. And, and, and you learn uh, by the way of observation that you have. So you observe people, you observe your parents. So for example, someone who belongs to a business family, he learns organically how to manage money. He learns organically how to, how to see things happening or how to see money growing. So most of the people have wonderful ideas. Unfortunately, they do not turn up into a successful venture because, because of poor money management. So one thing that I really, really recommend everyone that in case if you want to learn at an early stages of your life, please understand the importance of money and how to handle money, especially when you are an entrepreneur. Let's go. Let's go with the uh, Prachi ma'am as well. Well, uh, I absolutely agree with you, uh, Dr. Vikran, but uh, I believe they, these two things go simultaneously you know all these things go parallelly because entrepreneurship is as uh, i can see in the comment box as well onto your uh, uh, points onto your views uh andy martha sir is also saying like it needs a kind of a, a creative gut feeling and risk-taking attitude when we talk about uh, entrepreneurship and even when a child decides about it because uh, i meet with students eighth standard onwards and it is not that easy because we really do not focus we have been focusing in, uh, into their childhood when they are when they are baby and so that moment of time we easily figure out that you know um, ye to doctor banega, ye engineer banega. and somewhere around in india if we talk about non-stem courses are not given enough value and importance because that something goes extra hmm. we majorly focus uh, and give importance to these courses only where whereas other than this the, the all these courses are equally important but um, how to choose how to understand what is uh, the uniqueness of every single child because every child is unique in themselves but what they are unique about that also needs to be understood that what they are unique about how they are unique about you know so that skill set understanding about themselves again it is almost not that easy for everyone so these things needs to come from the school uh, curriculum itself where students would be able to understand that what their uniqueness is what they are actually extraordinary with in total and so that everyone would be able to understand in that manner that this is my skill set and i can do this thing best in my future or through these skill set these are the career areas where i can easily get into and if these are the career areas what career future i would be having or what are the career options i will be having where i'll be able to excel myself you know so at remarkable even uh, we do this uh, iq ability interest aptitude so we do a kind of a psychometric test and help them uh, in figuring out the best one but i believe uh, rather getting our help uh, it's something which comes from within uh, through their own swot analysis when uh, something when where i tell all my students you know uh, that one thing which is absolutely very important uh, is to know yourself and knowing yourself spending more time because career is something where we spend more time um, we actually marry our career because that's something we are going to live with throughout our life. It's, still, it's not that we are changing it day by day. So give importance. Even when we are going to buy a something, uh, any garment, we are even going to a restaurant. So we spend a lot of time while uh, you know looking at the menu and then we discuss and decide. In fact, while going to a restaurant, even we think and we discuss and we talk that which one to go and which one not. So one question which i ask my students every day that how much time do you really spend while deciding your career or how much time have you spent actually we have been going in a uh, you know a process where we are learning and doing things just just randomly just everyday day-to-day -day life and reading books and going through with this 
but spending time within yourself and understanding that what your skill sets are what all your areas are what you can do the bestest which no one else can do where you can brush up your skills in a unique way or unique manner so that you can excel in those areas other than that then once you decide probably one or two areas then you figure out with one thing which is absolutely uh, out of the box and then focus on that particular niche so even in business entrepreneurship there are many areas even in um, bba if you uh, choose as a subject uh, for your bachelor's or master's mba which students look like uh, look for but then what all areas are there because it has tremendous options so which one to get into again in bba because bba probably into general bba probably into finance or hr you do kind of a specialization like we do for mba nowadays business is after we do like even after medicine we look for mba so entrepreneurship can be into any area but which one is your unique uniqueness uh, or your skill set is uh, lying in that we need to understand so that we can actually figure out which one is best for ourselves i believe i've answered it well over to you meeta dr prachi has very succinctly put that to find a career for yourself it's the best thing to do is reflect reflect on what your skill sets skill, uh, skill sets are what you are good at and what you can master and if there is something that you actually are very passionate about you can go out and uh, pick up those skills and learn about them so it is all uh, dependent on the student right prachi ma'am now coming from here i also feel that uh, the decision makers especially in indian homes are parents and parents in india have often advised their children to take on for a safe career and like be a doctor be an engineer be a lawyer and seldom have they said okay go out venture and take risk seldom i i am surrounded by people you know who are advising their children at the max to you know computer kar lo mechanical kar lo civil kar lo so uh, risk versus rewards perhaps that is the area and i think uh, parents need to understand what their children are good at so so what would you uh, guide the parents as well as uh, the students what are the advantages of being an entrepreneur okay so first of all uh, while talking about the advantages of being an entrepreneur and i think it's more psychologically that we need to think about and what i can tell to parents is about entrepreneurship is a very rewarding career though the failure ratio is quite high but do not get demotivated do be demotivated by it and i think the parents those are already into some kind of business they can more correlate to it so if someone comes from a, let's say a government sector or or some let's say in in generations together someone has seen only jobs so it's difficult to convince those people because they view success as a fixed income that is coming as a part of your job so so if you look at the compounding power of money and i'm not talking about the investments over here i'm talking about the compounding power that business gives the the multiplication that happens the valuation that happens and we can take multiple stories in that case for example if i talk about byju's byju's turned into a unicorn within a very short span of time and look at what ravindran byju is doing right now uh, you know he has acquired uh, Uh, the akash and then the grade up and the other companies so it has become massive in terms of size and and the growth has been very very organic as well as phenomenal within a short period of time no job would have given you this salary the best thing that i can give you with the help of examples you look at iams in iams usually i'm talking about the iam amdabad because i am based in amdabad so i know more about the figures of iam amdabad the average figure goes somewhere around 18 to 20 lakhs per annum i'm talking about the packages that have been given by the companies we still have few examples where a lot of lot of passing out grads have refused to accept any job and they've gone further with their own experiment of starting a venture there are many names that i can right now name as we, as i teach entrepreneurship as a part of my uh, teaching subject but without getting into the many examples because then i'll speak more about the examples and i won't be able to focus on the topic in that case but yes when we talk about these examples if i talk about iit is also for that instance or iim is also for that instance uh, it's very important to understand that an incentive can be there in terms of package 20 lakhs 25 lakhs it looks a wonderful figure but think big and when you think big you do not know the potential of the child potential of the creativity potential of the business that really runs into 
In fact, I was reading yesterday's newspaper, and in Times of India, it is given that Honorable Prime Minister has said that fintech is going to be the next big thing in India. And you can see right now in case of Zerodha, which is a common trading platform that doesn't charge us anything. You talk about the story of Grow, G-R-O-W-W, -W, that is also a fintech startup. You talk about the Growista, G-R-O-W-I-S-T. Growista is also one of the startups that has been growing phenomenally well. So you look at these examples and these entrepreneurs have just entered into the market after 2014-15. Most of them, Lenskart is from 2010. Uh, Nika has entered into the market in 2012, Falguni Nayak. As we all know about the success story, we recently had the IP of it. So, so what we need to understand, look at the multiplication in terms of money that they have made. It would have never been possible uh, with the entire years of your service. Ha, but you know, a lot of people feel that we should be safe, we should be comfortable. So if you're thinking about the comfort zone, trust me, entrepreneurship is not your cup of tea. But if you're ready to test the waters, if you're ready to, to give time to your own self, trust me, entrepreneurship is something that will always bring success sooner or later. And it will always teach you something. So you're never at loss. So my message to the parents, if you never tried entrepreneurship, please try it. Even, you know, you can try, try it as a part of your part-time jobs or duties, and then you can possibly turn it into full-time. But please follow your passion and let your child follow the passion. Nowadays, a lot of universities and colleges have this incubation center. And with the help of these incubation centers, you can actually help a child to nurture his or her idea into a dream, which can be converted into a reality or a startup. We have Venture Studios, we have a KIF, that is Karnavati Innovation Incubation Center, that is foundation. Uh, similarly, we have an incubation center with uh, the IM Ahmedabad also. We have an incubation center in Gandhi Nagar, which is called as 1947. So you, every kind of help is available with the incubation center. The only thing is that you should be ready to, ready to give yourself a chance. Gusek is also doing wonderful job, which is a part of uh, incubation center by the Gujarat University. It is one of the largest, let me tell you, in Gujarat, Gusek, G-U-S-E-C. So the reason I'm telling you all these names because we have people who are students who are 20, 21, 23 years old and they are there who are successfully working on their ideas and, and we can see the current valuation which is growing big time and participating, let's say watching some shows like Shark Tanks and I'm very sure that you know people those are on, interested in entrepreneurship, you must be watching these shows such as Shark Tanks so you know how to pitch, you know how to negotiate, you know what's uh, equity is all about so you learn more by observation so my my idea is parents realize that the money lies into business it's always there okay so come out of that uh, safe bucket that you always want to have for your child and please try to experiment and please allow your child to experiment because it's his life that he would like to go for so that's the answer from my side thank you dr vikrant in fact uh... I was also going to say the same thing with the digitalization and with the, uh, the pandemic outside, it has brought in a lot of other opportunities for us. And especially in the terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, making all these fintech and health tech and these kind of businesses. And the two biggest uh, pillars I can see today is fintech and health tech. Both are very, very important. Interestingly, you also mentioned Zerotha. I would also like to mention Cred in the, in the same line. And these two have been majorly successful, not just in uh, the uh, Cosmo uh, towns or cities, but also in the second tier cities like ours. And uh, my next question was going to be about the, uh, the incubation centers and the educational facilities that these people, uh, the people who want to take up entrepreneurship as a full time, they can uh, you know, avail of. So that is very nice that you already mentioned that. Uh, Dr. Prachi, we invite you if you would like to speak a little on uh, what is your uh, advice to parents who are always seeking for safer job options for their children? I believe uh, help them, sit with them and figure out uh, what they have in themselves and give them direction in that particular thing. I mean, every field is unique. Every field is good. But what your child is good for, that we need to help them, basically. So we need to start from scratch because I understand that they are not, I mean, we all understand as mentors that we they, are, they do not have that particular knowledge about that particular thing. And they are actually stepping into something which is absolutely unique. And 
um, roller coaster ride, I would say entrepreneurship is all about. But uh, giving them kind of a reality check, give them skill set, the pros and cons, bit of whichever field they are figuring out. Also help them, um, you know, the real life challenges which they will be facing in that particular field. Probably you can connect with them directly with people, those who are there in that particular field, so that they'll be having more insights about that particular field and they'll be able to figure out more whether they are there for this or not. And if yes, then probably it will help them in a bestest manner, I would say, that they will be able to decide and you will also be able to understand, yes, that my child can do it. Because that way, that's what together when we do so their strengths you will be able to figure out in an easy manner their weaknesses you will be able to understand what subjects they will be able to study or not probably someone who is very good with ideas but if they are not good with numbers right but then business is not for them but at the end of the day number it, it is all about numbers right so everything is equally very important and that can only be done because if they are not uh uh, have if they are, don't have enough knowledge we need to spend time with them help them figure out things hands-on skills figure out understand and give them a reality um, check uh, help them in connecting with the right person even if they are looking for any sort of let's say i'm an tech person i'm more into edu uh, i'm an edupreneur so if i would have met someone who is already in that particular field people those who are doing so you always get to learn things in always in a bestest manner right so that way we get more knowledge and more exposure and then reality that the product with the idea which I'm thinking of is going to work out or no and that acceptance is also required so that I believe before you decide a career it is important even before that 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 failure even when we start that's something which is very important in entrepreneurship that day when you decide that you will fail not once twice thrice in fact even more than that and you are ready to accept that failure very well so that you can step above because that's the process of learning and when you will you have learned obviously you will do great after that so once you are ready then it is fine but students those who have always scored well great in their grades and then they are stepping into entrepreneurship they might face challenges in that moment of time because uh, we need to actually start from scratch and we need to understand and accept it and there are two words which are very uh, similar so in entrepreneurship or even that uh, comes in our personal day-to-day -day life as well expectations shouldn't be there acceptance should be there when we talk about entrepreneurship so when we start accepting the things the way they are and then figure out you know the real way path and entrepreneurship is all about solution because people those who are looking for they are all looking for solution problem is everywhere what you are solving and which way you are solving that's what people is, are actually looking for so your unique selling point of your way of sol uh, solving the problem that's what people want in the market right problems are there many solutions but your solution should be unique and out of the box so do not just feel proud that you came up with there are many people out there now how are you you are different from others that's important so that way, if we can give our students not a tough one, but hands holding, I'm talking about here, give them, help them, and then nurture them from there. So that is important. Over to you, Meet. So a uh, lot of portable quotes here. And Prajima has said, failure is but a stepping stone to your further success. Second, she said that do not expect, but accept what your child wants to do. Third, she says, please find out what is the unique problem that you are solving. There are lots of people out there. There are a lot of challenges, enough competition, but you have to find your niche, your uniqueness, the unique solution that you are offering to a problem that already exists. So thank you, Prachi, ma'am. Thank you for such lovely answers there. And I would like to add here that entrepreneurship not only gets you a lot of uh, lot of financial gains and profits and everything but i i as a life coach feel that it teaches a lot of life skills it generates your creativity and problem solving skills uh, it provides you uh, knowledge about not only about markets about economics about your customers also about psychology of people it makes you a leader it enhances your uh, teamwork capabilities improves your communication, improves your networking skills, 
and your attitude at least for me as an entrepreneur i feel my attitude towards life has changed so much so apart from all the tangible uh, advantages of being an entrepreneur i find as a life coach that there are so many life skills that we learn from this would you agree ma'am absolutely 100% and i believe yes. dr vikrant wanted to add something when i said so uh absolutely ma'am whatever you said is absolutely right uh, one more thing i wanted to add to students that please start watching or let's say learning or knowing the business models of different startups that we are seeing right now so if i talk about pine labs if i talk about the razor pay someone has talked about the razor pay over here so what are they so they usually help the as a part of payment services they have come into existence so if you talk about the paytm paytm always had the first mover advantage because there was nothing in terms of wallet service that was existing before it doesn't mean that mobi quick oxygen and other wallet services have been a failure in that case so first mover advantage you learn from the business models that the business models that have first mover advantage have always been more successful but you can always have a similar model also if you have a different idea of implementation if you want to go ahead with it so please study as many business models as possible with as many startups as possible try to understand from where they generate the business so how does charge be operates for example so it assesses the payment gateway such as paypal and others so the more you get into the depth of it you will be able to analyze the current economy the current startups the current contribution towards uh, you know what kind of so for example i was watching this business model as somebody came with an electric scooter so if that electric scooter is a part of let's say uh, as a part of sales it's, if it is a part of operations for some organization it won't generate that much amount of revenue but uh, yes if it is a part of some service which is directly interrelated with the customers it will definitely help you to get that revenue so please understand revenue and all these things even at a, and you don't need a commerce degree for it please understand that so please understand business models that i want to say of as many startups as possible which will give you a clear cut understanding that yes now i feel that i can differentiate myself because unless until you won't be able to differentiate yourself first in terms of ideas experimentations it would be difficult for you to first of all judge yourself whether i can be an entrepreneur or not forget about being a good entrepreneur or a bad entrepreneur first of all whether i'll be able to you know justify the uh, entrepreneurship or not is something you can learn from the examples and the business models so very well said vikrant sir uh, what vikrant sir is saying that yes please go out study there is a lot of competition out there but there is a room for everyone so if there is a room for paytm there is a room for razorpay and oxygen also so well said sir and yes please when you are taking the risk of entering this field plan organize streamline and manage all your dynamic uh, ideas in this you know uh, very uh, 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 fast moving global market space so uh, so we have spoken about the advantages we have spoken about how it is a life changing um, path to take are there also some disadvantages where there are pros there are always cons so is there something the students should know before they enter this really uh, can you just repeat the question really sorry for that so uh, if there are so many advantages to this field are there any disadvantages also so that I the think. students are able to make a balanced uh, you know idea see not to demotivate you people but there are more disadvantages to be very honest because the kind of time and money that is involved so you know a lot of time we feel that i have invested 10 lakhs so if i have not been able to become a successful entrepreneur i have just lost those 10 lakhs understand the opportunity cost as well if you would have worked or been employed somewhere you would have earned let's say 5 lakhs so you have actually lost not only 10 lakhs but 10 lakhs plus 5 lakhs it's 15 lakhs plus the interest that would have amounted so when you think commercially you will realize that it it comes with a lot of stake but trust me it's worth trying because in the longer run it will give you better benefits and better outcomes it's similar to equity market that i usually connect with if you are looking for immediate profits in equity market possibly it is not the right place for you but in the longer term if you feel that equity market is there yes it is good for you so entrepreneurship is always for long term benefit and i think we have studied a concept in commerce which is called as going concern concept that whenever you want to be an entrepreneur just do not think just as a backup plan ki ye nahi chala if it doesn't works i'm going to take some other profession in that case think it as a long term objective and trust me it is going to be successful you look at successful entrepreneurs they start a startup 
they are successful at a startup they change it they go to the next one then it is successful they change it they go to the next one so so one thing we need to understand that yes it does have disadvantages and money is the biggest disadvantage that i can think about and the second is time because it's difficult to earn both of them they don't and money and time we cannot reverse time first of all so you know you should not feel that uh, nostalgic feeling you should not have that you know i have wasted five years of my life and i would have done this and then that you should always be satisfied that it has always given you that learning experience and if you are happy deep inside your heart trust me it is worth going for so it has disadvantages i won't say false things to you i won't give you high expectations you know but with all the things that are around us uh, money time and energy these things three things are going to be invested and and if you are a very newbie into it i will i will really suggest you to work in a particular sector for two or three years as an employee uh, try to understand how the business operates uh, how the margins operate and in every factor or every every domain of the business and then if you have a genuine idea that you would like to experiment with you can go ahead with it but do not blindly jump into it i don't i don't mean that you know people those who directly jump into entrepreneurship are not successful entrepreneurs they are they are but you know if you want to be still safe it's always worth giving time to be an employee so that you understand the employees side as well you do not think purely from the commercial perspective there is certain humanitarian aspect also that you involve but but it's it's something that you need to realize the uh, expectations because society expects a lot from you so uh, on the way on the journey towards becoming an entrepreneur you are accountable to a lot of people so answerability what we usually talk about is not easy people so you know people those who are not able to face the investors or if they feel that you know i don't want anybody to question me then entrepreneurship is not for you you are accountable you are answerable to lot of stakeholders and you should be comfortable doing that so so this is the disadvantage that i feel that you know you might feel that you have wasted your time energy and money but that it's all about the perspective that you have towards it are you are on mute meeta you are on mute meeta meeta you are on mute sorry for that my apologies and this so happens in a virtual uh, platform i'm sorry for that now uh, i was just saying that we have this remarkable woman from remarkable education who's been a very good business woman so i would like to her, uh, know from her apart from all the advantages that you have of being a business woman do you also face some kind of disadvantages or if you wish that yes maybe this thing is missing out here certainly there are a lot but uh, again uh, as dr vikram said satisfaction which comes first so every morning when you wake up with the same energy and by the end of the day then you you know get tired and then you have challenges you face number of things but one and majorly which we all face as an entrepreneur uh, is a startup financial risk and that's the biggest risk uh, you know facing many small organizations are actually into financial sector and looking at the current situation to be very honest when we talk about covid so that's again one uh, area and even if we have spent invested whatever way we can say so that financial risk is always there then um, as a new entrepreneur uh, strategic risk i would say because it can be hard to know what steps to take and when your organization is brand new and then what to do and when and how so that all those strategy structurization we have not never studied as such we don't know to whom to contact where to collaborate what to do and what not to do so you have the idea but still with that idea that structurization of everything onto that one chart paper you know that one big piece of a paper that uh, that's that will be your ladder like we know after first you will be in second then third then fourth and fifth similarly in entrepreneurship you need to you are just the only one and then you need to plan things in that particular manner that so that you can easily execute or you can reach out to next level so that that steps are required to be executed so that uh, risk is always there and uh, another thing which is again uh, i believe reputation uh, is at risk so yes so that's that's also one thing because you've been working hard for it you've been preparing you you have your unique idea but then reputation because even if you come up with you know everywhere your near and dear ones will also feel that 
really you are doing this i mean there are many you can earn this much you worth this much why are you doing this you have plenty of things you have family business why this so that's again another challenge for everyone that you know why not following your family business why not doing this why aren't you going for a job so that's again that reputation is that always a risk um, mm. and uh, another thing is liability at risk because uh, obviously you have office your expenses and many different things so that is again because you don't know what's going to happen next and that's what entrepreneurship mm. is all about next day no one knows what you will get and when and how so that's another disadvantage uh, being an entrepreneur because at job even if we are not well we can take a break and we can say no that i can't work but being an entrepreneur that's something which is not there you have no option whether you feel okay or not but that's your area and then you need to be ready with it no matter what and obviously people will be asking you because you are supposed to pay only difference and the biggest difference because here you will be paying not getting at the end obviously you get because that's what business is all about but initially to you know that doing that liability is again a very big thing i mean all these are from my experience and uh, last is security yes i would say at risk definitely so that's also another point i would like to state yeah that's that's from my yeah. experience i would uh, say yes dr prachi i think what i missed uh, when i shifted from an, from a career to uh, entrepreneurship is that you know that 9 to 5 uh, hours that i used to have and after 5 o'clock after 6 p.m it is my time but in this field there is no my time there is no me time at all you are always on the go thinking of your next big step thinking of your next collab thinking of your next venture so uh i don't think there is uh, any any fixed timing so if you have a uh, an appetite to take risk if you have an appetite to put in your all your energies and all your time then this field is for you because it has so many advantages and your name and your fame and the added uh, financial benefits if that is what you want then entrepreneurship is for you so going ahead from both these uh, stalwarts from the academia field i would and uh, most of the parents here who are watching this show would like to know if uh, what are your recommendations for a good college or universities where we can enroll to educate ourselves to be into a successful career such as entrepreneurship vikrant sir if i talk about the colleges institutions i think i would like to name first my institute because i have observed that institute very closely that's kannavati university we have an honors into bachelors of business administration that offers honors into entrepreneurship now there are reasons for it when i say this as parents also you can have a close watch and student will be actually going through that process that in entrepreneurship there are a lot of things that we don't know to be very honest let me let me tell you parents so when you have an idea it's very important to safeguard that idea first of all so how to safeguard that idea is being taught in the four walls of classroom and with the exposure that they receive to different incubation centers the next stage after protecting the idea is to how to start working on that idea how to get you know complete the legal formalities whether it's about the registrations or anything else so it's not necessary that you need to know all these things it is now being held and all the different departments whether it's the technical side or the legal side any any side that we usually talk about that is being assisted by so one the one one part of the entrepreneurship is theoretical in nature we talk about the financial analysis we talk about the financial ratios we talk about the marketing component we talk about the surveys we talk about the adaptability factor we talk about the you know pilot surveys and so on and so forth so there's lot when we talk about the uh, theoretical part when we talk about the practical part of course there should be a proper blend of practical and theoretical learning and that is available when you go for the entrepreneurship learning though we have a lot of institutes in india uh, and it's needless to say you know the google has been the best medium of giving you the uh, learning that which are the entrepreneurship institutes in india and and everyone is trying their best 
in order to give better entrepreneurs because this is something that we can see as an initiative from the government side as well. So we have now lots of funds available for the entrepreneurship ventures, but students are not aware about it. So institutes have been doing this bit that how to channelize their energies in a certain way and how to help government in a certain way that the students idea can help to contribute towards the economic development. And government is doing big time funding for that. Whether we talk about the green energy solutions, uh, where we have a lot of EV vehicles and automation coming into it, whether we talk about the renewable sources of energy uh, that that has been changing big time our planet as well, or or whether we talk about uh, the different tech based startups that we are having nowadays, whether we talk about the edutech, health tech, fintech, and all those tech startups that are coming into picture. So yes. Uh, you can identify which university or college is good on the basis of kind of startups that he had or in the in the past time so the best way to go for it i think it's it's one of the best courses that you should go and and you know i think the culture also matters a lot the reason gujarat is known to be one of the uh, entrepreneurship states because we find business uh, in the conversation that people have even while they are having dinner or lunch or you know even as a part of their casual conversations they talk money so when you when you have that kind of culture, and I think because because uh, the the university in which I teach is is located at the heart of the Gujarat, uh, where we have uh, the business throbbing, uh, you know, no matter what the situation is, even during the COVID, people come out with different ideas at how we can prosper, how we can make things profitable. So yes, I think the culture has a has a huge role to play apart from the university and the college, and uh, it is important that you know whatever university college that are there in Ahmedabad. Uh, Gandhi Nagar Belt, especially the ones that do, those who offer entrepreneurship are the ones, uh, you know, because we have a lot of lot of facilities available as a part of our exposure. Uh, we have, in fact, the way we have shark tanks, I think we have local competitions also. In fact, recently we had the competition in our college itself. And the, the name of the competition was business idea competition. And we had a lot of students participating with their ideas and the proposals and they had prepared the elevators pitch. And they were pitching their ideas in front of the investors. And finally, uh, you know, we had awarded uh, the top three students who had performed best. So, you know, that kind of exposure, whether from the management activities point of view, is very, very important for the parents to understand, realize, to nurture that dream in the coming time. So that was from my side. So very interesting to know that uh, colleges uh, have now, you know, uh, uh, made the simulation uh, of businesses for students and the young uh, students instead of talking Bollywood, are talking business, instead of talking of cricket scores, are talking of commerce. So that is a wonderful shift uh, that we see in the young folks today. And certainly the pandemic has become an eye-opener, sir, as you rightly said, for everyone, and especially for the people who have been working in, uh, in companies or firms or who were employed or were in jobs. Now they have also understood how uh, being in business or being in a startup is far more rewarding than being in a company and being in a secured uh, atmosphere. So uh, going moving ahead, I would like to know some last words from both of you uh, about uh, for the students as well as the parents here. Prachi, ma'am? Yeah. So, I mean, I've said a lot for students and parents. Uh, adding to Dr. Vikrant at Kanavati University, I am, uh, personally know that uh, they've been doing great uh, for entrepreneurs. And uh, since uh, I last, when I was in conversation with the one of the heads of the university, they were doing a lot of projects uh, related to entrepreneurship. I mean, the startup events were going on and uh, funding and the investors were there. So that huge event was there and I was also invited. And then there, there was a virtual event as well when we were working with them. So that was amazing. And the way students came up with the ideas and like the way they were pitching and presenting their ideas was absolutely unique because I believe uh, when I uh, started in India as an entrepreneur and uh, when we were pitching, we were actually taught every single thing and we went to this women entrepreneurship program, like kind of a small mini MBA we all had. And still we were very much confused. But those students were so crisp and clear with their concepts and uh, quite presentable and they would know that this is the idea this is my usp and this is the cac you know um, and that's how i'm reaching to my unit i mean the entire unit economics they had everything was so clear in their mind the way they were presenting so they, they were actually um, uh, i would rather say that the abcd of entrepreneurship 
was given uh, to them in that particular manner that that the way they were actually not only studying but they were actually working on different projects together so that one thing which i really liked uh, about uh, kanavati university when i was speaking to the students other than that being a career coach i would also suggest you few other schools and colleges yes definitely but uh, symbiosis because many students they wish for but the big brands so you all can get into but then uh, definitely there are uh, different other uh, options are always there but here i would suggest look for the institution who is actually working for you not through you so they are already there look for the profiles of the faculties look for the um, background of the institution what sort of placements not the brands associated with it but what's the uh, you know uh, at the end of the day what is that number where students are are getting actually the uh, jobs and what sort of brands are associated with it but also uh, your faculty has how much knowledge so that you can because that's a kind of a duration where you can learn as much as you can right rather looking for the step 5 focus more on step 1 that at that moment of time how much you can get from that one person what sort of exposure that faculty has where you can reach after this so next step because obviously every faculty would be working in one or the another organization or freelance helping other organizations so where they can give you better opportunities probably you can work on different other freelance projects or something like that so that adds value rather just looking for brands look for the background of uh, the institution and the faculties where you get better exposure because someone who is growing you grow with them someone who's already grown can only guide you a bit but guidance you know uh, it it is helpful it is definitely but i'm already there i may not be having that much of time to guide you every day right so learning from the right person the person who has actually grown or the person who has actually worked day and night and experienced that will be giving you a right knowledge but someone who is only has experience of books because entrepreneurship is a subject where you will be learning something live experiential learning is more important because all that you will be doing live and living that so that one thing which i like more about ku so with this uh, i believe over to you meeta thank you or we can answer for that and uh, what i totally agreed with uh, prachi ma'am is that entrepreneurship is not about books it is going out there having the exposure getting the experience and the best thing that she said is please network go out and get more and more internship opportunities so that you go and work with the experts in this field before you set up any of your own venture uh sir vikrant sir uh students if you want to have or if you want to become an uh, entrepreneur the first thing take an internship with a startup you'll come to know what startup is all about and there are a lot of startups nowadays those who offer internships uh, let it be an ngo also that doesn't matter for that instance second thing while while going for a college or a university uh, be very clear what you want to learn you can look at the list of subjects you can explore yourself certain things but trust me self learning is going to be at your benefit always so try to explore as many things as possible no doubt the system is always there for the students to help them to get more opportunities but at at the end of the day it will be upon you it will the complete onus will be on to you that how do you take things forward if you want to go two step forward the faculty will be pushing you four steps forward that's the kind of preparation that we have or you know every faculty would have in that case but yes the enthusiasm should be coming from your side and and we are ready to give you or offer you as many resources as possible but be very critical will while going with the courses look at the pros and cons try to evaluate always three three things when searching for a university or college first is faculty second is placement and third is research and for entrepreneurship also these three things matter placement faculty and research so entrepreneurship is does does talk about a lot of research also that i'll be able to talk more once we have more time uh, i know we are running short of time so that was all from my side thank you you are on mute meeta very succinct and very concise vikrant sir has said that please look for three things that is uh, your uh, faculty your placement and the kind of research that is available in the college so all of you out there if you have the ambition if you have the zeal if you have the stomach to take risk please go and search for this 
one route to success, name and fame. If you desire to be your own boss, and if you want to uh, take your fate in your own hands, you have the motivation to be a global entrepreneur, I would suggest, and I'm sure these two experts that I have today with me, Dr. Prachi Gaur and Dr. Vikram Jain, have given you enough and ample reasons to take this uh, route to success. These uncharted territories are waiting for you. All the best from all of us here. And please join us next time on this very channel. Thank you very much, everyone.